So the first thing oh, we're going to talk about is family life and what it was like living with Tim. Okay. So this is me with my host sibling, and then this is Michael with his host family. And so as you can see, in China, you sometimes get like all the relatives living in the family, like the aunts and the uncles and the grandparents and everything. And so a lot of our host families try to accommodate us by speaking English. So I know that Michael's host family, um, his mom spent um, the three months prior learning English so then she could communicate with them. And then some of our host families already spoke some English due to jobs. Like this is Claire's host family. She's not in the picture, but her host dad um, has a job where he was required to speak English. And same with Jill's host mom and my host mom. And then transportation was a big thing in China. Um, we take the subway a lot, which we'll mention later. And then we also took the bus, the public bus, um, to all the streets, and it was really crowded. And there were like mopeds and biking and like everything. Um, and then for meals, the food in China was super cheap. So like a meal you could buy for like five, ten dollars, sometimes even less. Um, so our host families would take us out to eat a lot, but they also helped us prepare, the, um, they let us help them prepare the food. So this is our friend Emily, um, and she's helping do some stuff in the kitchen. And this is her host sibling, Kevin, eating some um, bean, sour bean milk stuff. <laughs> school and school started at like eight o'clock every morning but we had to be there for morning exercises at 7 15 and so some of us live far away so we have to get up really early but um morning exercises were either like where you had to move your body to music or we had to run around the school three times and the morning exercises were weird, but we liked that better than having to run because nobody wants to be running at 7.15. And then um, the bulk of our day would be spent shadowing with our host students, which meant we um, basically sat in the back of their classroom and rested. We had a rest, as they like to say, um, as they learned their, learned what they studying. And we could slept, we did our other work, but yeah, there was not a lot of interaction because there was a lot we couldn't understand. But um, we did have some special classes. Um, the most important ones were our English class, which was just our class that we had with our, the teachers that came with us to Jingxiang, and that was more about like, Chinese history. And then we had our Chinese class, which is obviously important because we're in China. But the more fun special classes that we had, um, they were like calligraphy, fine arts, Handy working, martial arts, and it was just, it was really nice that they put this together for us because it gave us a break and something to do in the day that wasn't just sitting and listening to some things we couldn't understand. Um, and lunch was actually very different from lunch here because it was 90 minutes. It was that, that was their big break time of the day. And so they would normally take that time. They'd eat for 30 minutes and they'd go out and they'd play but a lot of them used it as like an extension time to get help from teachers or work in study groups. And because of this super long lunch time, school would normally end at, at like, and it ended later at like four or five a lot of the time. And after school, what we did was we developed a group passion for working out. Um, our friend Emily here, um, she came to China with one unbreakable goal, and that was that she would continue to do CrossFit like as much as possible. So we found out there was a gym in the in the basement of the school, and she made that place her home and brought everyone else with her. So went to China, weak. We all came back, still weak but a little bit stronger, and she's still very fit. And also we ran and we played ping pong, but um, we tapered out at ping pong because we were getting a little too aggressive. <laughs> Um, we also, we, there was a Chinese cultural performance that we got to sit in on, and it was where um, each class did a song, and some individual students did dances, and we were asked to perform, and we made an American dance that was like American dance through the ages, and we all got dressed up and 
friend Claire there, she was going to choreograph it. It was super fun. Before we're talking about school outings, let's just take oh, yeah. a brief moment to this is the uniform. D display the uniform here. This is what this is what we wore every day, five days a week. Beautiful for pants school, too. Five days a week, roughly eight hey. hours a day or Wait, so. Even Seven. if it's hot. Even yeah, if mm -hmm. it's hot, I they mean, they do They do have a summer uniform, but <coughs> we pra practicality-wise, it wasn't worth us buying it. So we suffered and stuck it out in these. <laughs> yeah. But it's beautiful. What if you, if you took it off, what would happen? Uh, ooh. Punish, punishment. Punishment by death. Um, <laughs> not by death, but by our, our English teachers. Actually, the Chinese teachers, they didn't really care what we did. Yeah. The Chinese but teachers, teachers. Care, cared less than our American teachers did, <laughs> yeah, which no, was... We had a couple interactions where we lost, we lost some privileges due to not mm. wear, or taking off uniforms oh. too soon, or yeah, the uniforms for in topic of we would always life. We would always wear clothes underneath, so that way as soon as we got out of school... We'd strip down. Because it, <laughs> oh, it was... Yeah. 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 This was... Uh, they were the best class. A lot of negativity around that uniform right there. But on the brighter side, let's talk about school outings and stuff we visited around Beijing. Um, so we visited a lot of places and our American teachers were kind enough and the Jingshan School was kind enough to allow us every Wednesday afternoon, we were allowed to leave school and go do some sightseeing around Beijing. So this is Emily and Claire doing their little signature high five picture at the Forbidden City. Uh, here is a picture from the top of the bird's nest and a picture of the Summer Palace. Um, the Jingchan teachers also on weekends organized trips where they would bring us to certain places. So Temple of Heaven, they brought us there and it was really cool. Summer Palace again. And Natalie here is doing some nice model work at the Forbidden City. Uh, another picture from the Summer Palace, uh, Sally's. Sally's having fun here. Would you like to explain this picture? <laughs> yes. Um, on the side of the Forbidden City, there were these like lion heads lined up. I don't, I don't know what it's for, but they all have little holes in their mouths. And I thought it'd be really easy to Photoshop someone onto the Forbidden City, so I wanted to make sure everybody knew that I was actually there. And I thought it'd be easiest by sticking my finger in the mouth of the lion. And, <laughs> and Sally really likes this picture, and. She likes to think of it as encapsulating China. You have very um, traditional and older aspects, but you have innovation here. Innovation with the umbrella hats. That's beautiful. Uh, 798 is an art district in Beijing that we grew really fond of. Um, it was an old factory that was redone into this very modern and hip art area. But as you can see, we enjoyed the art, but what we enjoyed more was the restaurants, because the, we discovered this place probably about three months in, and we were all getting really sick of Chinese food, and this had some great American and Western restaurants, so this became a very hot, big hot spot for us. Uh, Wang Fu Jing was probably the biggest spot for us. Um, it's a shopping street uh, that's like a seven minute walk from the school, so this is something we would often go to after school, and it's, if you take like Newberry Street and Times Square and you throw in some more shops and everything and you mash it all together, you'll get Wang Fu Jing Street. And on the sides of Wang Fu Jing Street, there are also these things called hutongs and they're small alleyways where they, they sell, hmm? Uh, hutong, yeah, they just yeah. learned the word hutong. Oh, so you guys know about hutongs? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. we would. Kind of you know that the hutong people will yell at Yes. Oh yes, yes. they scream oh, yeah. a lot, but they have nice little cultural trinkets that nobody Not really me. needs, no. but you no. want. You want to have it. So. Yeah. But what we're doing was our thing. Uh, Nan Lo Gu Xiang was almost, it was kind of like Wang Fu Jing, but toned down a little bit, and it had more traditional aspects to it. Um, the buildings and architecture there were a lot more traditional, but inside there were still modern shops that would sell modern stuff, like Western stuff that you could find here. But also in Nanlo Guxiang, there are also a lot of modern traditional shops. So they would sell um, better quality traditional uh, cultural souvenirs. So I like this place because it was really easy to pick up souvenirs for other people. 
Uh, so this is just, Sally took this picture in a fan shop and then was heavily criticized and yelled at for it because they really don't like pictures in their shops, but it's, it's me sure. Um, here we have a newer building that was going for a more traditional feel to it, but I don't, you probably can't see it, but this is actually a Starbucks here. So um, it looks older, but it's actually a very modern, uh, and of course, you can't go to China without seeing the Great Wall. And we were actually, we actually got the chance to be part of this uh, government-run uh, tourism event called 1,000 Americans Climb the Great Wall. And um, so you can just imagine that even though it was a really beautiful day out, it was still very hot and there were just tons of Americans sweaty and climbing the Great Wall together, but it was still fun. It was still fun, and <coughs> Sally had some. Sally and Emily had fun. They went off and did their own little photo shoot, and there's a Facebook album out there with uh, the photos that they took. So, I mean, I, I, I saw the photos. They were nice. Some of them a little bit scandalous, but. Just centered around that do rag on the top of my head. True. There are because... 13 different ways to wear, so I wore all 13 of them on the Great Wall. Continue on. And a couple of them in the winter, in like the first three weeks that we arrived, visited the great, a different part of the Great Wall. And I wasn't there for that, but Ying and Sally can mm -hmm. talk about that if they want. You summed it up. It was just yeah. the part. I heard it was more strenuous. It yeah. killed them a lot more than the part that we did with the yeah. tourism group. But also these sausages. Yep, those sausages were good. Uh, parks in Beijing are much different than parks here, and when you go to a park in Beijing, you'll see vendors, there's a lot of activity going on. We, you, you go to any park and you'll find people dancing, and it's very lively and very full of people <coughs> doing various other activities, and it's exciting. And every, basically any park you go to in Beijing, you could spend almost a whole entire day there just doing whatever. Anything you want to do, you can. If you want to sleep, you can, honestly. We and can. it's a lot of the parks, they're very nice, they're very relaxing, and people go there, they exercise. There was, there was a park that we went to where we saw uh, this international sports club doing, like, playing baseball and American football, and it was really cool, and the parks have a lot to offer. And finally, the most, probably the most political politically landmarky place that we <laughs> went to, landmark. political landmark that we went to was Tiananmen Square. And here we got the chance to see Ma Mao's mausoleum where Mao's body is preserved. And it's like a never ending funeral. And we, you walk by his body for like three seconds, but that was, that's all you got, but it was still really cool. So Tiananmen mm -hmm. Square. Are there are still many people? people? Yes. yes. Oh, yes. Still, yeah. No, no, no. I mean the Ma Maos, uh, mausoleum. Uh, oh, there are still many pe visitors. Yes. Oh yeah, it's so many, so many, so crowded. Every day. Wait, why? You only can. Long line. You only can like look, look at him for three seconds. Like it's yeah. a constant. Because well, there's so many people that yeah, want to go. So you have to keep you moving through. Yeah, so it's like you're on a. It's like if you're just yeah. on a moving sidewalk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a moving sidewalk. So you can't like go like this. No, 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 no. You can't stop. In and out. Well, it's, it's not, it, you're not actually on a moving sidewalk, but that's the feeling you get because you're just, you're, you don't stop walking, you're always just walking, and then you walk by his body for like three seconds and you're out. The guards keep ushering you along, so. The, There's um, no what do the people there think about Mao? They love, they really, I think, yeah, a lot of them really, really like him. I think they, yeah, it's I like 10% bad, 90% good. Mm. And like you see so many people that, are trying, you can see the effort that, and the lengths that people go to see them. I mean, they offer like handicap and wheelchair services oh, to, yeah. because you see so many, especially older people that are like, you don't think they could even physically get out of the house and they're there and they're, they're you see so much energy in them and so much effort and drive to make sure that they see Mao's body. He's like surpassed humanity. He's like some, he's like a deity almost. It, mm -hmm. it's, it looks, it looks religious, the building. It's interesting. Yeah. So now, food. So, oh. four months in Beijing, we gotta eat at some point, so, yeah. 